Anyways. Yes, I'm on someone else's property, but we're fine. I'm just barely in their property, though, so. It'll be fine. There's a whole jumping in here, anyways, in a minute. I'm gonna find my little tree spot. Anyways. But, sorry, guys, for interrupting this video. But, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about what's going on and some other stuff. But, thank you. First, I want to say thank you guys for watching my video because YouTube Record the Hate Speech is like every other independent creator on this platform as of lately because YouTube is stonks unless you're a late night talk show host but if you guys really want to help me and support my channel you can do what is happening right here probably beside my face or where my fingers pointing right there see you can subscribe click the bell and there's some ding dings right there see that, that's pretty but really guys if you want to do that it would really help my channel now let's get into the actual video so hello welcome back to my channel today is Tuesday whoop whoop Anyways, guys, so today, look at this. We got tomatoes that popped up on our shelf. We're actually going to grow them see what they are. They're probably some weird hybrids between what we had last year. We had, like, uh, we had mule team tomatoes, and we had, like, cherry tomatoes, and we had, like, yellow tomatoes. So it could be some weird-looking tomatoes. Because this year, we're going to try to grow uh, tomatoes and, like, uh, you have to, in order to keep seeds true, if, you, if this is the most important thing, you want to keep seeds from any plant you ever have, you have to take it 200 feet away from other plants like it, like, if you're planting, like, multiple varieties of tomatoes or peppers like we do every year, you, whatever seed you want to save, you got to take them and put them 250 feet away. I think it's 250 feet. It's, like, 250 feet, I think. But, yeah. It's, like, the minimum. So they don't get cross-pollinated with different things. Because if you do, you'll get, you won't get true to variety stuff. But the best way to do it is just to plant your whole garden in one type of stuff. I think, I think, uh, you can actually cross-pollinate with tomatoes and cherry tomatoes. And then yellow tomatoes also, and you get, like, weird ones. But just different varieties of the same tomato also cross-pollinate. And I think you can also cross-pollinate, like, pumpkins and squash. Because they're basically from the same family. I think. I'm not entirely sure how that one works. But what just, just to be sure, if you want to do, like, if you want to save seeds, just put, like, one plant, like, 250 feet away from the rest of your garden. And that way, you can save seeds. Or if you have a small garden, just plant the same variety of everything. Like, one variety of each type, whatever you're planting. Like, one variety of tomatoes, one variety. Of, and then you can save the seeds from that. At the end of the year, which is pretty cool if we're gonna do. Because this saves you money, like in the long run. Especially since things are getting crazy. You might want to learn how to save seeds. But anyways, guys, let's get this day started. I will cut back in a minute. Whoop! Hi guys, I'm back. It is super nice out here. It's almost 60 degrees, which is gonna be like this basically all week. Which is cool. And I think it might get cold and rain this weekend. Not like super cold, but it's gonna get colder than what it is. But it's like it's like I think I checked it's like 57, 58 degrees. No, no, it's like 54 degrees. I don't know why I got 58 from. It's like 54 degrees, but it's almost 60. Hey, look, all the all the water melted, finally. There was ice in it yesterday. Not like full ice, but it was ice-y. There's like ice on the very tippy top of it. Come on, Jake, we gotta go. Come on. Well, we don't gotta go anywhere, Jake. I don't got nothing to do because the chickens are already out. Chickens are happy. They've been out since 9 o'clock this morning or whenever. My dad's been letting them out because he'd go to work later now in the day. Jake, you okay? You okay, Jake? You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. There's a chicken over here. I hear it. I see a chicken do. I see a chicken do. I see a chicken do. Chick, 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 chick do. Chick, 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 chick do. Look, there's a chicken do. Come on, Jake. There's a chicken do over here. Look, I don't know why people say that uh, uh, lake horns don't like to get out. Of course, those could be the other one. We have lake horns and we have uh, Rhode Island whites also because they're a little bit different. What are they, are they called? Rhode Island? Yeah, the Rhode Island lights are probably the ones that forge, but they're white chickens that go everywhere. Like all of them go everywhere. But they are really bad for predators. If you have bad predators in your area, I wouldn't get white chickens because they they're first ones to go because they're white and they can see them easier and they just grab them up. Plus they're small and they're easier to catch for whatever predator you have, like anything basically. Like basically, <laughs> our white chickens are always the first chickens to go. Seriously, like I don't know why. It's probably because they're white and it's easier to find. Also, guys, I got a spring project in mind. Hopefully. Uh, we're going to cut down all these trees over there along the power line because they're getting ridiculous. And I'm just going to chainsaw them, come down, and throw them on these and burn them. We've got three piles of burn here. We don't need to cut these stumps down to the ground. I'm going to cut these stumps down to the ground with the chainsaw as close as I can get. Also, we've got to run the chainsaw anyway and get rid of that tree up there around the chicken house. And then I'm going to cut down all these trees on the road. I'm going to have my uncle help me do it because I'm afraid to run a chainsaw by myself. Not that I can't. I would just rather have someone with me when you're running a chainsaw just because... Chainsaws can be dangerous because you know it's, you can cut your leg off or something crazy. Like I don't even, I was like, obviously when I do use a chainsaw, I'm more careful than when I use like a regular saw. But if you're just out there by yourself, you never know something could get wrong. I don't really trust myself all the way because I'm crazy sometimes when I give the chainsaw. But yeah, all this is gonna go bye byes in the spring. I'm gonna cut all this down. 
the idea is, is to cut all these down. Bam, all these down to the brushway. One, because that's where stuff likes to hide out when we have uh, foxes and stuff. They like to hide and grab chickens. Seriously, that's where they would hide. It's not, and also these stumps have to go away because I'm going I'm to cut these to, to the low as I ground to, the, look, as low as I can to the ground as possible with a chainsaw. Then I'm going to take an axe and I'm going to hit the axe on it and break it up so I can actually run up with the, with the lawnmower. That's the plan. I don't know how well that's going to go, but we will try. But yeah, the, the goal is here is to cut all these trees down, make it look nice like the rest of the yard. It looks crazy right now. We're going to cut all these trees down because they're getting close to the pile. Oh, not too close, but those ones are in the pile line. But those one, that, that's like a pile line that's all, you don't got to worry about that one because it has like a coating on it so you can touch those. But those pile lines, if they touch those, you'll get shocked to death. But uh, yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't, uh, yeah. We got stuff to do here. But the idea is to cut all these trees down. And all on the other side of the road too because they're getting crazy down here too. But there's a big pine tree there. I'm not even going to touch because it's too big. But uh, yeah, the idea is to do that and then plant these trees here, like a whole row of these trees up through here because they look nice plus they flower and then when they all flower and at the same time be pretty cool which is why i tried to clone a bunch of these none of them came i don't think no my clone trees okay also these need cut down too these get ridiculous also there's a big old tree in there plus they, these grow back all the time because they're uh they're invasive uh they're called a uh, shumac they grow literally everywhere that's what was growing on top of the foot over there was shumac literally once you get one shumac tree they'll shoot uh tree up through their roots all the time and they'll just keep going crazy and crazy and crazy they'll take, they'll take over your whole yard or your whole field or whatever. That's what took over that foot up there was Shumax. Yeah, that took over that foot up there. Well, they're gone now because the guy cut it with the, with the thing. But, uh, tractor. Come on, Jake. We're going this way. No, Jake. We got to go this way. We got stuff to do. Jake, we got... Well, we don't got nothing to do, but just come with me. I got to grab these garbage cans, Jake. Guys, I'll come back in a minute. I got to grab something, and I can't do it with Jake in my hand. So, I'll come back in a minute. So, Hi, guys. I'm back. I had to get garbage can out of the camera. But yeah, these trees have to go too because these are ridiculous too. But that big tree is staying. It's too big for me to cut down. Plus, it's right next to the pile. I'll have to have hire a professional to do that one. But yeah, the rest of these, they can go bye bye too. Which we can also put trees down through here also, which would be pretty cool. Which is what I want to do. But we'll leave this area down here open like this. And we'll leave that area there because it's wild. Like, it's good to have some wild pieces. Especially if you have like a K cat. Gee. Kitty Cat, you're nuts. Jake, he's going to beat the crap out of you. Jake, get out of his butt. Jake, he wants to play, not be... Yeah. Get him, kitty. Anyways. As I was trying to say, it's good to have, like, wild pieces of, of places on your property. Which, oh, I don't cut down all the trees behind the barn. I mean, we could, but I'm probably putting more trees back there anyways. It's good to have, especially where you're, like, an orchard like that. It's actually good to have different varieties of trees, like whatever trees, because they're actually good with pest control. It helps with pest controls and stuff like that. I can't talk. Give me a minute. Ugh. Okay. As I was saying, if you can't hear me with the wind, uh, it's good to have, like, wild areas in your property, which is why we try not to cut everything down, but those are, like, the front yard. These just look ridiculous. But we're going to replace the trees anyways with more trees, but back behind the barn where there's all kinds of trees at, I'm not going to cut most of them down because most of them are apple trees anyways. And the ones that aren't, why well, should be good? Because if you have an orchard, like most orchards are filled with pests. Jake, what are you doing? We're going this way. Jake. Most apple trees are filled with pests. Like at the wazoo. Like really, really bad. Like they got to spray like all the time with like. They have bugs. They have diseases. They have milk. They have mold, uh, fungus and stuff like that. It's just bad. But... A way, easy way you can combat that is is add different kinds of trees, make like little wild areas. Because once you bring in different kinds of trees, you get kind of birds, you get different kinds of insects, you get different kind of like. And then once like you have like multiple different trees in a row, you can't spread from tree to tree. Because they go through another tree, and that tree might not be susceptible to it. And so when that tree becomes susceptible to it, you only lose one tree instead of like the whole orchard. Because you have just a whole orchard of one type of apple tree. One apple tree gets it, it'll jump to the next tree, next tree, next tree, and keep going. Unless you're gonna be with like chemicals and stuff like that. But if you have say. So you have like an apple tree that gets infected and it's next to like a cherry tree and next to like uh uh say a walnut tree or uh or uh an oak tree or something like that then only the apple tree will get the disease it won't spread to the other two because they're not related enough i mean it might spread to a cherry tree but yeah but if you have like multiple different trees around plus it'll bring in different kinds of bird species and animals because the different kinds of animals you have around like biodiversity you have it'll bring of course the roots will do different stuff with the soil also like there's actually some nitrogen fixing trees 
then it'll add nitrogen to the tree, to the stuff. And also, once the trees get big enough, it'll lay down a nice layer of leaves. And you know where you got to fertilize? The, it'll do it itself. It'll be like a forest, basically. But that's years down the line. But you can have different kinds of animals, like birds and insects live in different kinds of trees. They'll eat different kinds of birds. They'll eat different kinds of insects. And then once, and then you have different kinds of insects living in different kinds of trees. You have like wasps and bees and predatory wasps and bugs and good bugs living in different kinds of stuff. And then, of course, you'll still have bad bugs, but they won't be overpowered by all the other bugs. Your publish will stay down because of the uh they will stay down because of all the other bugs you're talking about like like we'd be in like a true ecosystem like right now the reason why we have such bad bug problems in the u.s like in trees for this chicken's wanting to fight me go away chicken every time i turn my back it comes right at me come on jake jake get up ahead of me so he don't hit you hurt you come on jake jake yeah, as I was saying, like, the reason why, like, we have to spray so many stuff, especially in, like, mega crop farms, like, people that have, like, giant trees, like, giant farms that, like, 20, 30 acres of, like, one plant, is because there's only one type of plant there, and there's no insects around, because all, not all insects live on, like, corn, or not all insects live on apple trees, and so humans decide, hey, we'll just grow for maximum production, which, actually, some, some, some studies say you get more production from going more organic and not like they say in about five years you actually triple your production and you get way more from trees and stuff if you go more natural like no till no chemicals and nothing like that you get more from it if you go natural but of course that takes time i can't talk anyways yes i want someone else's property but we're fine and it's barely in our property though so It'll be fine. There's one more jumping in here anyways in a minute. I'm going to find my little tree spot. Anyways. But they have like no biodiversity. And plus they sprayed the living crap out of it. So it kills like everything in the soil. So the plants can't even fight off what they do. Like it, it's crazy. If you guys want to do some research. You can look up on YouTube. Like people might think I'm crazy. But it's mostly true. Okay Jake. Up and over the fence we go. Come on. Over the fence. Alright Jake. We got to go over the fence. Yeah. Over the fence we go. Come here. Come here. I'm on over the fence. There. Sorry about that, guys. I had to take my dog over the fence because it's too tall for him to jump. See, now we're on our property. See, we're good as new. We didn't go all the way around. Sometimes I walk all the way around and walk down the other neighbor's yard, but I don't want to because, yeah, they might get mad at me. I'm not sure. Well, they don't think they'll get mad at me, but I wonder if they're pretty nice. But, uh, anyways. As I was saying, this area, like, this area right here is wild, but, like, see, there's, like, this area up here is pretty wild. Like, we might trim out some down some of these trees, because there's just way too many of them. Like, there's, like, ten trees here in one place. Like, yeah, some of them might be cut down. Like, around the fence line, they might be cut down. But, of course, these trees, the the bees and the birds love these trees, because they think they're honeysuckle. And they get, like, little white flowers on it. There's, like, these little pine trees. They love them. They spring, they, they basically bloom all year round. They have all kinds of bugs. We come back here, no, at the right time. Sounds like a chainsaw going on back here, which is good for the bees. Like I said, you want different biodiversity. You just don't want one type of tree or one type of plant. Like the more the more variety you get in your garden, even like your little small garden, it, the better it is. Like it, like different roots do different. Like all, every time you put a root in the soil, it does something else to the soil. Like like uh like nitrogen fixers, they'll fix nitrogen, and then like you have like rooty vegetables, they'll they'll actually help with funguses. Like, like some flowers are they're more like they get like big giant roots and they stand around. They actually help like bring in fungus to the soil, and fungus is very important because once like micro micro like connect all the roots together and they share nutrients with everything in the soil. It's actually pretty cool. I think they said like it goes like up to like ten miles micro fungi can or something. I can't remember exactly. It's a really long distance, and the trees can share with like everything else up to ten miles as long as it's not disturbed under the ground. Pretty interesting stuff. But uh, yeah. Also in America, we we kill our topsoil. Like this is like the practice of America. We literally plant like, especially down like in the wet, like in the Midwest where they have like two, three thousand acres of corn. They'll literally plow the corn up. They'll they'll they'll, they'll pull the corn up. They'll they'll do the corn crop, and then they'll just spray the whole ground with some like Roundup or some kind of chemical and leave it bare all winter long, and then replant it in the spring. I don't know why they don't just plant it like rye there in the wintertime and let something grow at least something. That way it holds the soil down. Because right now. All that winter long when it, there's no nothing there, all that soil is just blown away, and you're not gonna be able to use it for anything else. It's, it's pretty bad, but uh, yeah. Come on, Jake, we gotta go this way. 
pretty bad stuff. Like they need to, that. And plus, whenever they spray like a bunch of nitrogen in, and stuff, because they they they, they swore by NPK NPK is all you need, which is actually not. Most of your soil actually has enough NPK in it to grow any plant you want. It's more you don't have the microbiology in the soil to make it available to your plants is what it is. But they fix that by just spraying a crap ton of, of NP and K, which actually, it actually, once they spray so much of it, actually leaks out into like the watershed. But but even if they want to do that, if they plant a cover crop on top of that in the, in the wintertime, it would actually hold that NPK there. And then when they plow it under in the spring, they could, it'd be available to the plants again. They don't got to actually, they would actually basically take about half their cost of fertilizer away. And then if you got really into cover crops, like you could do a whole lot more. But the best thing for your soil is to have something growing there year round, like that's green, basically. Like, yeah, it, it's, you can actually get pretty complicated when it comes to gardening. But basically the main thing is add compost. Uh, also, if you wanna know if your garden soil is, is good, go dig up a couple holes in your yard. If you find earthworms, your, your soil is pretty good because if there's no earthworms then your soil is basically dead. But if you have earthworms, it means they're good. But we have earthworms all over our yard. And also another good thing to add to your soil or garden, is these guys any type of animal because they had all kinds of bacteria life to it because whenever they use the bathroom there's little drops of explosions of bacteria in biology anywhere they go so yeah there's little drops of anytime they use the bathroom chickens especially cows and horses actually if you have like a farm if you like a rye field and you let your cows go graze it the, the, the rye will actually grow bigger because they don't eat it to the ground they eat it like so far and they actually well as long as you keep them moving, if you keep them moving, they'll graze it. And when they eat the plant, there's something in the slob in the, about biting it. And then the slob that makes the plant grow bigger. So the plant will actually grow bigger. And then, then you can come through and knock it down and then plant in it. But uh, yeah. And also when they use the bathroom on it, pee, poop, whatever, they will uh, add a whole bunch of microbiology to the soil. Because whatever's in our gut will come out and then it'll go into the soil. Come on, Jake. And it's a pretty good thing all the way around. Anyway, guys. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. So, uh, okay, guys. Uh, someone left a comment on my video there. I should actually... I forgot to mention this. But, since I've already talked about gardening anyways in this video. Uh, so, okay. Someone asked a comment about how you make compost tea or warm tea or anything. Well, okay. Compost tea is basically you make... You can buy compost at the store too, right? Or you can buy it anywhere. Like, you can get... Comp you make... I, I would make your own compost because it's usually better than what you get at the store. Uh, basically, okay. If you want to do a five-gallon bucket, I would do about a half gallon of... I would, a half gallon. I would fill the bucket up with water. Unfil it has to be un has to be either rainwater or filtered like tap water or well water. Well water probably be best or rainwater. Well water, rainwater be best because the chlorine in the water will actually chlorine and fluorine and cl and fluoride will actually kill the uh, stuff. You can get a uh, uh, hose. You can get a uh, you can get filters that filter all this out at the, at the like store for like a couple bucks or whatever. But uh, you got to make sure it filters out chlorine. And it depends, it depends on what you have in your water. If you have fluoride, fluoride's a little bit harder to get rid of. But uh, chlorine, most people have chlorine, chloride, and uh, fluoride, which is bad for the microbiology. But basically, all you got to do is, if you want to do a five-gallon bucket, if you have a small garden, you want to do a five-gallon bucket, I would do about a half a cup of, I will do about a half a cup of, um, of compost, put it in a five-gallon bucket, uh, let's it, let us put it, ugh, put it in a five-gallon bucket. Then you can take, if you want to be better at it, you, all, you, all you really do is just stir it, or you can actually take another bucket and pour it back and forth like three to four times in a 24-hour period. Or you can put an air bubbler for like a fish tank for like five, you can put like a little air bubbler in it, put it in the bottom with an air seal and let it sit overnight. And then the next morning, it'll be bubbling away. It'll have like foam on top, which is the biology. And then you basically, once, if you don't want to save it, you have to use that within uh, about a couple hours after turning off the air, because by that point, all the bacteria die. But if you want to keep it there, I would add about... I'll add about a, a third a uh, cup of uh, unsulfured molasses to it, and that would actually get something the the biology something to eat for a couple more days. Or you can add a uh, kelp mill, or if you want to, do, or if you want to add minerals to your garden, you could actually add like a tea, like two three tablespoons of uh, rock dust or rocks or rock dust or something like that into it while you with the compost. And then you could then you could uh, put that with water. But all you, then okay now if you want to do a fifty gallon bucket, which we'll usually do, uh, I would do. Hmm, I'm not really sure about the measurements for a 50 gallon bucket, but basically, if you want to keep it for longer than a couple hours after it's done, I would take a whole can of unsulfured molasses, stick it in there in a five gallon bucket like or 50 gallon bucket like this, with like two to three uh, uh, shovelfuls of compost. I do two shovelfuls of compost and two shovelfuls of of warm castings. If you want to do warm tea, or if you well, that would be like a warm casting slash compost tea, which is probably better because it's probably different biology in both of them. Or if you want to do warm casting, you do like three three teens. 
three shovelfuls of warm castings or three shovelfuls of compost into a 50-gallon bucket. And then I would do an airstone in this because it's a lot of work to stir this around and stuff. You have to need an airstone. You can actually get bigger airstones, uh, more powerful ones for like expensive money. But we use a little tiny one, which does the job. But we don't even use unsulfured molasses. We just use it right away because our garden's pretty big enough. It takes a 50-gallon bucket, basically. But if you want to keep it for like a couple of days, all we want to sell, you can actually sell this stuff. If you want to like make it and sell it, you can put in like gallon jugs. But if you do that, you're going to actually have to add uh, molasses to it or some kind of something for you, like kept mill molasses. Those are two major ones. You can also add, uh, that's about it actually, that I've read online. But we don't do that because we use it pretty quick. So we just basically add, kelp, kelp. we've been, we're going to add uh, molasses to it this year because it actually makes bacteria grow faster and more of it. So whatever's in your compost slash warm casting, it'll grow in the water because it, it'll be aerobic. Like basically, the aerobic stuff will grow because it's going to be aerated. But if you don't aerate it, you might actually get more ba uh, anaerobic bacteria, which is kind of bad. It can be bad. Some people say it's bad. Some people say it doesn't really hurt you. But I, I would not spray. If you don't aerate it, I would not spray it on root vegetables or something you're going to eat. Especially like leafy green vegetables like lettuce. Stuff. I would not spray it on that. And if you do spray it, I would make sure you aerate it. And then I would actually wash it really well too because there could still be bad bacteria in it. But the main thing is, yeah. Also... If you're going to spray compost tea, I would actually spray your plants with it too, not just not just water with it. Spray your plants with it too because it's actually anti-fungal bacteria. It'll actually fight off funguses and stuff like that. And bad, uh, like it'll actually help with like on tomatoes where you get like blight. It'll actually help with that. Some depending sometimes it depends on what's in your compost tea. Like if you have like the good bugs in it, it'll actually fight that off because it'll actually go on the plant and it'll kill the bad bugs and overpower them. And it's pretty cool stuff. But right now, guys, I'm gonna get more eggs. No. Yeah, I just want to tell you guys, I like filming outside because we've got chickens in the background. Right, chicky doo? Right, chicky doo? Right, chicky doo? Doo, doo, doo. I'm sorry if I didn't explain it very well. I should have had like a, a paper talking about it. But yeah, basically, go do a five gallon bucket, add like a, ha a fourth cup of compost tea. Or maybe, I would do like, probably, I'll probably do two cups actually. Do two cups of compost tea and then probably like a cup of warm casting because warm casting goes pretty far if you want to do a mix. But then if you're not, just do three of each. Yeah, a fourth cup probably isn't enough. Right, chicky do, right, chicky chick chicky do, but yeah, I would do like, yeah, I would do like two shovelfuls of, actually probably a fourth cup is probably big enough for a five gallon bucket. Yeah, I do a fourth cup for a five gallon bucket. Gotta watch this chicken; he wants to get after me every time I come up here. Uh, I see you back there, dummy. You're on camera now. Uh, got you in the act, caught in 4K. Go away, dummy. Go fight the cat. No, actually, don't fight the cat because he's not doing nothing. You know what? This is what I think of you. Get. Yeah, that's right. Now how are you going to get in here, huh? Now what, huh? You can't get me to hand you, huh? You guys should go this way and do whatever the fence you want to. Dummy. I'm going to watch him because he wants to fight me. He doesn't like coming up here to the chicken house. Because he's a rooster. Anyway, guys. I'll cut back in a few minutes. So, bye, guys. I'm back. So, earlier in the video, I talked about how to make compost tea and all that stuff. But just one thing I forgot to mention. You need to... We well, don't have to put it in anything, but it just makes it easier. Whenever you put the compost tea into a five-gallon bucket or whatever you want to put it in, whatever water container you have, you need to uh, put it in, like, uh, a Mylar bag or something like that. Like, you can put... What do you, what do you call... Uh, these things. Hold on. If I can get one out. Give me a second. This is my uh, compost tea stuff. Hold on. You need something like this. You can actually get, I forget what these are called, like burlap or mylar or whatever you want to call it. You can get, you can also get, uh, basically something that, that's permeable for the, for the compost to come out of. Then you can just pull it out and then, and then when you're done with the compost, you, or warm, compost slash warm key or both or each or whatever you want to do, you can just take it out and then, uh, yeah, you can put it on your garden because it's still, it's still organic matter, but it's not really very many nutrients but you can put on your around your plants or whatever it's that organic matter it won't really add very many nutrients to it but yeah just forgot to tell you guys that also guys it's super late it's like 11 30 now and i forgot the end of the vlog earlier so my bad right jakey you gonna go to bed jake oh gonna go to bed he said no he said i'm tired you gonna go to bed huh. anyways guys I guess I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. In a, well, not in a few minutes because I got to vlog first. So, hi guys, I'm back. Going to go vlog. Well, I d did do a lot today. I told you guys about compost tea and how to make it and stuff and stuff like that. Hope you guys find it informative in the comment. The person that left a comment, hope they find that video helpful. <laughs> hopefully I explained it pretty well. Kind of all over the place where I explain stuff. But hopefully you get the gist of it. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, guys, I'll talk to you guys 
tomorrow. So whoop, roll the extra. Hi guys, I'm back. If you made it this far, I want to say a big thank you because watching a lot of my videos like this, if you watch to the end, leave something below like banana or lemon or leave leave your favorite fruit below if you watch this far. Well, it'll be our little secret to anyone who doesn't watch to the end. You won't know what's happening in the comments. One, because comments are good for the algorithm. And two, watching to my videos and it's good for the algorithm. So if you guys want to do that, it'll be awesome. Also, there's videos here, here, and here. There's two bits on my face, and then there's my channel to click underneath my face to subscribe. That'd be great also. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching my video. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Woo!